Rich Marshall, thanks very much for joining Facts TV. Richard, how are you doing? I'm very well, yeah. I'm looking forward to you interviewing me. You've been a bit scarce, haven't you, over the last few weeks, so I'm glad that you've made it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the start of the rugby league season is obviously tonight. Uh, we're recording this on Thursday, the start of the championship season. Uh, just a few days' time. You're looking forward to getting back into the swing of things? Yeah, it's exciting time for everybody. We, as a club, we've had a really good off season. Um, we've, we've, we've helped, we hope we've fixed up some of the areas that we felt we fell short in last year. I think the recruitment's been really good. I think we've got some really good, talented players. I'm really happy with our reserve grade uh, boys hanging around and being a year older, year wiser. So in terms of preparation, my job uh, and the coaching staff, have, we, we feel pretty happy with what we've done. Uh, but we've got to turn it into performances starting at Widnes this week. How do you reflect on the 18-0 draw with, with Featherstead at the weekend? Just uh, Not just gone, sorry, the week, weekend before, so that wasn't it? you don't know what date is, do you? I, I, I corrected myself. Okay. We, uh, yeah, that was it, was it was good and bad. Um, there was, it was good to come through a bit of adversity and, 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 and finish a game with a, a deserved draw. Mm. Um, but we didn't have our strongest team out, and, and, and we ch we changed some players positionally. Um, we lost James Sottenstall with a hamstring injury, and we had to reshuffle some things. But that's what's going to happen in the year. Uh, Featherstone were, were uh, and they're playing for a new coach, and um, and obviously positions for, for for their first game. So. Yeah, they were up for it, as were we. It was an improved performance from the week before, we felt. Uh, we just didn't put two halves of rugby together. How do you reflect on pre-season as a whole? A win, a loss and a draw? Um, how much can you read into results and, and, and obviously the performances within <coughs> those as well? Uh, yeah, we've ticked every box there. Um, I think we're improving. Uh, we're improving in, in, in the areas that we identified last year. We've got some quality players. And, uh, and if we can keep that team spirit that, that we've so happy that we've gotten and and and, and, uh, and our team first mentality where no one's bigger than the team will will go a long way uh, it's a tough competition though we did the season launch last week over at york and i think we were wrote off i think we've been wrote off again uh, written off in the people that i was speaking to and if you look at the book the bookies odds and and uh, and obviously bradford and york have um, a, ch a champion in their squads and what they're going to do and that's great and obviously the, the Toronto and Toulouse with pots of money uh, yeah it'll be it's an interesting competition it'll be good uh, we're just again rebuilt you know, well not rebuilding we'll be just we're getting stronger and we're growing uh, and we're and we're looking forward to this year in the championship mm. I think we sort of said the same thing well I sort of said the same thing this time last season in terms of it's been an even tougher championship season and obviously with York and Bradford getting promotion and looking very strong during the off season would you you think that's going to be the same again even tougher than last year yeah and I think the first three weeks you'll, you'll see that three four weeks of the season um, I think Lee and Featherston were, were rolled off weren't they uh, end of last year and mm. I think they both really built up yeah. really good squads and luckily for us we play them in the first four weeks before they can hit the straps but we uh, yeah it's it always is it always gets tougher the, the competition improves uh, so so do we um, so yeah we've got a, we've got a genuine opportunity this week against a full time team over at Widnes uh, who have come down from Super League I don't think there was a lot between the two teams when we met them, what was it, four months ago in, in the middle eights? Yeah. Bounce of a ball, we could have got that first try and what have you, but we're playing them this week in the championship. Mm. A bit of a different team from the one we faced that day. How much can you read into that, that previous result? Yeah, they, they, they've obviously lost some personnel um, and we've not. We've, I think we've improved. So, so that, you know, we're, we're more on, on parity with witness. Um, but you know they'll have had a f they've had a full full time off season. They've got some players that we're aware of. Adam Tangata looks like he's, he's he's back to his best, which is great for him. Uh, Danny Craven, we know about him. He's he, he came and came and played last week for against North, uh, uh, North Wales, so he was really strong in that game. Uh, yeah, so it's it'll be a good interesting test for us. Uh, the weather. And the conditions may may play a part. Obviously, you're looking at outside at the shade at the moment, mm. and that's mm. covered in frost. I think it's minus three at the minute. 
we've got to put a practice session together tonight. I don't think we're going to be able to do what we normally do. I think it's, um, but it's not health and safety. It's just, yeah, it's not. I don't think we can get out and do what we normally do on a Thursday evening. So, but that's what happens this time of year. Yeah. Do you think there's any um, added pressure on us considering this? First match back in the championship, and you know, given some of the, the players that they've brought in over the off season. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think uh, they'll be the favourites. They're at home, full time team, They're well coached. Kieran's done a, a great job over the off season. I know there, and and they'll be the the favourites to to beat Halifax on Sunday. We just got to turn up with the right attitude. Our attitude's been okay in the in the friendlies, but we've not had our strongest team out. We still won't. I know Witness have got some injuries uh, that, they've, that they've stated. So have we. Yeah. Shane Grady, and Ben Johnson, Reese Chapman Smith, players like that won't be playing. We're checking on James Salton's store with his hamstring and people like that. So we're not as strong as we'd, we'd like, but we'll have a good go this week. Mm. I was just going to come on to the injuries. So obviously, start with half backs Scott Morell and Ben Johnston. Yeah, we're all, yeah. Scott. Scott, fingers crossed, will be okay. He, he's come. He's come through okay. A couple of weeks now training. Um, uh, ben Johnston's had his had his the, the wires out of his thumb, which is great. Last mm. week, he's. Um, I'm right in thinking he had that done. Uh, that end of the season, yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. three month injury. Mm. So, but he's had them. He's had them taken out now. So he's probably about four weeks away. Um, and his uh, his partner's just had a uh, they've just had a baby, so he'll have some he'll have a couple of days off, and then we'll get back in. We'll get him rehabbed. And, uh, Chester Butler had a knock on his toe. James Sutton stole with his hamstring. Uh, Harry Kidd got a uh, concussion, but again he, sh- he should be okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, Reese Chapman Smith knee, uh, but he's doing a full week. Have I missed anybody out there? Yeah, Shane Grady. Yeah, Shane. Shane's knees uh, improving. Uh, he's, he's, he may be fit for Lee, right? But he won't be fit for this week. Uh, was Connor Davis? Was he? Oh, he's Connor. Yeah, did well? his ankle. Connor rolled his ankle uh, against Hunslet. Uh, got a twist of the ankle, and he, yeah, so he's he's not available either. A bit of a shit. Obviously, you've improved the squad size though this year, and obviously we've got the reserve grade, so plenty of you know competition for places and plenty of people to make up for those. those there is, that are, that are yeah, we've got. That's why we do it. We've got competition. We've got quality players uh, in beneath the first team. One of the things that in pre-season that I've been really impressed with is uh, we have thirteen on thirteen, and if you say you're, you're starting thirteens playing against everybody else. Mm. Well, everybody else has been better than the starting thirteen. <laughs> They've been breaking breaking them down. They've been breaking that starting thirteen down with plays and combinations, which is really good. It means we've got our our next tier of players is is developing really well. So you're not you're not just going against and you're getting challenged in training. They're challenging each other. Uh, I was being a bit facetious, which is really good. It's not you want your starting thirteen to be a lot better. Mm. But in, in in terms of development, we, we are way on track to where, how I see the club going forward. It's fantastic for us. So what that means is someone gets injured, straight back there, you know, someone straight in who's up to the job. Mm. Um, news today about dual registration, obviously with um, Castleford and, and Hunslet. So just start with uh, Castleford, just talk to me a little bit about, about that relationship. And, and obviously we had it last season as well. And, Obviously, I'm presuming that you thought it was successful to, to continue on from this season. Yeah, on, well. on lots of levels. Personally, it was great to have a good relationship with all the coaching staff over there at Castleford. It really helped me as a coach. Yeah. You were down there, weren't you, at a few of Castleford? Yeah, teams, yeah, I went down and uh, we got we, we picked the brains and we do a very similar analysis to games and similar thoughts. Uh, and it's, I think he's probably the best coach in the, in, 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 the, in the country, really. He's really good and done a good job and will do again. Uh, play wise we, we got we got we had Will didn't we all who was on loan and Brandon Douglas they were our two loans and you know we had Foster and, and Jai H. Cox and a couple of them players and we will do again. Uh, we will u- utilise that. They had a lot of injuries last year though, so we didn't probably uh, get you know t- tons of players thrown at us which is fine because we've got our reserves and we'll always say that if they're up to it they'll play. But if you're gonna get off of quality players on a weekly basis, you've got to think really hard about whether you're going to use them. Mm. Uh, ultimately, other teams will be doing it, and uh, and it was yeah, it was a good link for us. So, do you expect to be using it? We didn't really use it too many times last season. Obviously, you mentioned Will Morris, obviously on a season long loan. Yeah. Other than that, one, 
too many. It wasn't a regular. No, and you, really. you did some really good stats, didn't you, for us? Yeah. It was three quarters of the game that we won. We didn't have anybody mm. on dual edge. So, yeah, there's, the, the stats, uh, you know, it suggests that we're okay with what we've got. But the competition's improved. If we pick up a couple of injuries to key players, we'll need to utilise it. Um, and yeah, and it just keeps everybody on the toes. Regards Hunslet coming on to that, we we had Newcastle last year and, and that went really well. But they were Wakefield and Wakefield have got a big squad and a reserve, same as same as us. Uh, West Wales, I think the year before, but I think Hunslet will be good for our our top end players who are who just not quite in the first team, but uh, outgrowing or outliving the reserve grade. And we don't know how many com how many teams and how many games we're going to get. Mm. So we've got to have a, a, a have a fall back, and I think Hunslet is really good for us and, and them uh, and, and I hope we can get a, rela a really good relationship with them Yeah, as a club um, but again it'll be uh, only if we can we can't. We won't be sending anyone there who we don't th think he's up to it or, or doesn't deserve to play in the league in the, in League One or, or he's fit enough so, but that's a conversation on a weekly basis mm. and I know a few fans are sort of questioning the, the dual registration but like you mentioned in your statement you know if reserve players aren't going to be playing regularly enough then you'd want them playing competitive matches yeah we're about development here we're, and that you have we've got one avenue which is the reserve grade which is uh, is not well supported by a number of clubs so you have to look at other avenues other areas or you're going to lose players or you have to change your model or your template well we don't want to do that um, but we think we can run a reserve grade uh, with a wonderful support of our supporters and our tr and the trust and the foundation and mm. And facts won it. We we want that. It's, it's, it's the vibrancy of the club, but we need another outlet, and and, and that will give us uh, another outlet. But I'll, I'm not one of them coaches who demand that Gary and Hunslet play certain plays in certain positions. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. You know, we'll offer what we can when we can, and and that'll be because I wouldn't like that. I, I'll always treat someone how I get treated, and yeah. I won't treat someone uh, in that in that in that manner because I won't like it to happen to us or Halifax. You've got to remember that Halifax is um, is paramount. That's we do what we think is best for the club. Uh, I don't uh, in a, in the, in the ideal world there'd be no your edge. Um, it's I think it is as a detriment to the game. Uh, I think having a compulsory reserve grade and academy that's well funded and resourced is the way to go. But we're not in that we're not in that mold. Are you disappointed that that's? Not becoming more of an issue. It's something we talk about all the time. Yeah, I'm, it, yeah, and I'm sick of talking. I'm not like, sick no, of talking I, I, about I, I you. Get we, get we, you know yeah, yeah, it's like banging, banging your head against the brick, yeah. brick wall with it. But as I think I've mentioned this publicly as well, that it's brilliant that no one else is doing it because we're getting some fantastic plays through. Yeah. So carry on not running your reserve grade, and Halifax will carry on developing their own players. Mm. Um, just a final point to mention: TV Sky have announced that they're showing all the Toronto games and, and the playoffs as well, and. Championship match has been streamed on the Our League app as well. Obviously, more coverage for the league can only yeah. only be a positive. It's great for, 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 for the players, the club, our sponsors, our partners. Everybody's going to get some more exposure that they probably didn't think they would get. We didn't think we'd get um, televised games, obviously on Sky Sports, which is which is brilliant for the competition. Everybody's been talking about that for a number of years now. The end of season playoffs will be really exciting. Our fingers crossed, we'll be in there. Uh, and, and adding to that excitement and, and, and the competitive nature of the, of the playoff situation that our players haven't been involved in really, so that's great. Yeah, and uh, you know, I would our members and our supporters and sponsors get on that our league app and say that Halifax is your favourite team. Mm. Um, I, said that helps. I said final question, but I just thought of one more. Okay. Um, speaking to some of the players last week, um, and obviously I think we, we spoke about this earlier about obviously it's now a top five instead of a top four. Uh, and sort of you know, not taking it for granted, but obviously that making that a little bit easy. But one of the things the players were saying that they want to get top three. You know, they clearly, you know, not just setting it for a top five place. Is that something that you've you've set out with the team? You've got to aim high. Uh, you've got to be realistic as well. Mm. Uh, if we are to finish in that top three, then you, you you're better than a full time team. Mm. Um, we don't want to be known as the best part time team. We we want to be better than that. Uh, the way our model, our training model, we're not too far off full time here. We train at a good intensity for a, the play as the players for a long time. <laughs> uh, I think they left at nine o'clock on on Tuesday, and uh, they'll be leaving at nine o'clock tonight, providing we can get some stuff done. Um, so yeah, we work hard, um, but it's 
it would be difficult. It will be difficult to get in the top three, and it's all right saying I want to do this, I want to do that. You've got to put the work in. You've got to earn the right. And really, at the end of the day, you finish where you deserve. If we do everything that we said we were going to do, um, you know, and I will prepare the team to the best of my ability, then I think I don't think we'll be too far off. Fingers crossed. Best luck on Sunday, Richard, and we'll speak to you soon. Cheers.